Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the grand final of the Skilling Open 2020. Four beautiful games played by Magnus Carlsen and Wesley So. Uh, and first I would like to show you the game number one where Magnus Carlsen is going to play as white uh, and Wesley So as black. But all of four games are just incredible uh, and all of them for different reasons. But first one is the have very beautiful technique which everybody should know at uh, the idea so without further ado let's see what happened in this first game uh, we have d4 we have knight f6 c4 e6 uh, we have knight f3 and d5 so queen's gambit declined uh, we have knight c3 we have c5 semi tarash defense and now there are plenty of ways of playing that uh, so we have c takes on d5 usually one of the uh, sides are uh, gonna play with the isolated Queen's pawn, which is a very, very technical, uh, but also very often can become very sharp game. And there are also the lines where we're not gonna play with isolated queen spawn. So quite a unique, but uh, also very, very popular. Knight d5 and then e4. And after knight c3, b takes on c3. So it's very, very similar to Greenfield defense. However, the bishop is not on the g7. So something has to be done with this bishop. But at the same time, after c takes on d4, c takes on d4, this bishop can come with the check and exchange for, the, for this dark square bishop. So bishop d2. Bishop d2, Queen d2, castle, and this is very, very silent, very regular a uh, game where we just develop the pieces. Uh, we play knight d7, we have the castle, we have b6, b bishop b7, and so on. So pretty normal, very, very standard, and it was played plenty, really plenty of times. However, Wesley saw in this tournament started to play something else, and it's a very, very tricky one. So c takes on d4 already attacking this this knight. So of course you cannot take that because the, the knight gonna be taken uh, this is why we have queen d4 and now e takes on d5 so for the moment we have isolated queen spawn but only for the moment because the main line here is e4 and this is what Magnus Carlsen played now the idea of course is to exchange the, the queens uh, and then black cannot castle anymore so we have d takes on e4 exchanging the queens and now as the knight is under attack knight g5 attacking already f7 and also pointing okay now i'm gonna get back ma my material but um after bishop e6 that would not be the the smartest way on the on the board because we would have completely symmetrical game so what is the main idea here knight e6 f takes on e6 and uh, then Bishop g5, it was played against Wesley so before, but he did uh, very well here uh, because after Bishop g5, King e8, uh, what are you gonna do with this Bishop? You cannot take the, the Knight because you just gonna fix the pawn structure of Black. So Black would be uh, ahead of one pawn. So for example, Castle, then Knight c6 and so on. Uh, and this was played uh, against the Wesley so already. So Magnus went for Bishop c4, uh, threatening already taking the pawn on e6 and what to do so we have king e7 we have simply castle uh, because this pawns are not gonna escape anywhere uh, and now knight b to d7 so what is going on the board first black have one extra pawn however look at these pawns uh, magnus just said okay i'm gonna take both of these pawns and you cannot do much about that uh, black also lost the pair of bishops already that's the first thing the king is still in the center blocking this bishop so the bishop cannot be developed uh, and uh, what can be r more wrong uh, what do white have? White have everything, but at the same time, black can uh, go very, very fast to the end game, where actually white have quite a limited options. But at the same time, the position is extremely complicated. And you would say, hey, how it can be complicated? It looks like pretty easy. So let's see what happened in the in the game. We have bishop e3 by Magnus Carlsen, and this is novelty. Uh, normally we have uh, rook e1, and we have just one game in the database so nothing fancy uh, and then rook c8 uh, we have bishop b3 as the bishop was under attack and now knight c5 saying i'm gonna exchange my knight for your uh, bishop because this bishop on this diagonal 
pointing on my pawn is extremely strong. Uh, so Magnus said, I like my bishop here. So we have bishop c5, rook c5, and now simply rook f to e1. Already targeting one of the pawns. So uh, the pawn gonna collapse. Not much you can do if you play something like rook e5, then of course f4. You cannot take it um, here because your rook is hanging. So you have to move the rook and this pawn uh, gonna fall uh, this, this way or another. So this is why uh, Wesley so of course doesn't want to waste the tempo here. Uh, he just played g6. He want to br bring the bishop to the game and then the rook to the game uh, this way. The easiest way, of course. So we have knight e4, uh, we have knight e4, rook e4, and now the pawn is under attack twice, is on the on the light square, but we also have opposite colors bishop. So e5 saying, okay, your bishop not gonna target my pawn anymore, and Magnus said f4 attacking this pawn one more time and the pawn cannot take this pawn because there is the pin. So bishop g7 defending and now simply rook a to e1. Uh, very simple chess so far. We have rook f8 and now f takes on e5. So now what uh, Wesley so want to do is target this pawn. So what to do? Rook f5 already targeting the pawn three times. So now Magnus just push the pawn uh, and it's not attacked anymore. But of of course it come uh, with the cost boom bishop b2 so the material is equal again uh, black have two pawns um, against the one pawn on the queen side but from the other hand this pawn can be very dangerous for now is defended by the by the king so what white want to do is bring the rooks to the to the seventh rank this way or maybe this way but this is not possible because the rook is guarding the f file uh, so this is why magnus play rook d1 again very simple chess and now how to continue the best move for black actually is pin this rook because after rook c1 uh let's say rook e to e1 and then uh, black would have bishop d4 kicking the, the king, king h1 uh, and now simply exchange the rooks and now rook f8, rook f8, white cannot take this bishop because of the checkmate on f1. So that's a, that's a pretty beautiful one. And after h3, now black could calmly play rook d8, defending the, the, the bishop. If the rook gonna go to f1 and trying to get this way, bishop can always come to f6. If the rook goes this way and trying this way uh, to come on the seventh rank, then the bishop can come also to e5 and also uh, control the, the c7. So there is no way to find the entry points, a very, very uh, drawish position. Position. So that was the best what black could do. However, Wesley so immediately played rook c7. So he probably uh, missed that move. Um, and now we have g4. That is very interesting. I would like to just show you how complicated this simple position is. So for example, rook d7. And look at this. Rook d7. He takes on d7. And for example, the king is uh, checked. And the king cannot get this pawn uh, because would lose the rook. So this is the first first problem. So probably something like rook e5 trying to exchange the rooks. So rook h4, h5. Uh, and now bishop f7 would be very interesting. This is how this game is complicated. You cannot take the bishop because of the promotion. So probably something like g5. And now the tricky thing is that white now cannot take this pawn. Look at this. If the pawn is taken, uh, then the rook is not longer on the on the fourth rank. So bishop can come to the uh, to the d4 and after king f1 uh, rook f5 winning the bishop king e2 rook f7 both of the uh, sides have to be extremely extremely precise for example rook b4 uh, and now attacking the bishop so bishop c3 now rook b7 so this is the way for white what white could have uh, in this position but there is always rook f5 another tricky uh, idea because now bishop d4 is coming with the check and the checkmate on the f1 this is the just crazy stuff. The bishop is under attack. Uh, so h3. And now, uh, for example, bishop d4. 
and after king h2 probably bishop e5 uh, and that would be the the threefold repetition if uh, white would try to for example block uh, with the bishop on the on the e5 there is always h4 and another crazy variations uh very very double edge so it, it it's just it's just incredible and in this position if you try to take this this bishop for example the problem is uh the queen uh, and after taking then rook f7 and white have uh, extra exchange so so this position is extremely extremely uh, complicated a lot of ideas uh, and that that is the first game only and in all of the games we had the extremely complicated position the players were just exhausted uh here magnus decided to play g4 as this uh, maneuver with the bishop d4 and um, and the rook checkmate on the f1 in some of the variations uh, are too much for him he want to keep the the king on the g2 we have rook f8 uh, and now of course we have king g2 and now saying okay my king is uh, very safe here we have b5 so uh wesley so want to actually get some counter attack uh, otherwise magnus what magnus wants to do is bring the rook somehow uh to the d file and just occupy the seventh rank this is the plan this is the plan so uh we have rook e2 now attacking the bishop bishop c3 and now rook e3 very nice maneuver of the rook now the rook can come of course to d3 but also can enter the game this way and not much black can do about that so we have bishop b4 now bringing the bishop uh, just to control e7 as the king uh, is going to move we have rook e to d3 so magnus didn't go this way but uh, he said i'm gonna get and occupy the seven rank anyway and now we have a5 attacking counter attacking on the queen side we have rook d7 as planned rook d7 rook d7 uh, and now king f6 and now how to continue if magnus takes uh, the pawn on h7 is of course playable however he has to co uh, calculate another complicated uh, thing so a4 for example and after bishop d5 uh what to play for example uh rook d8 would be met with the with the rook d7 so probably rook c8 and then uh rook b7 going after that pawn this pawn could be actually defended uh but then bishop e4 and if black tries to take the pawn this pawn is hanging pretty crazy stuff so for example rook c4 king f3 now g5 trying to uh, control f4 uh, and now what to play next uh probably rook b4 and uh, maybe rook c3 uh, the king cannot go to f4 anymore so king e2 uh, bishop e7 blocking the pawn white have two extra pawns however black still have counterplay for example entering the position this way or maybe this way going for that pawn or that pawn a lot of complicated possibilities all of this is just insane what's just um, happening on the board so magnus didn't want to go for rook h7 he wanted to just eliminate any counterplay on the queen side so we have rook b7 immediately and now a4 and here is the moment where, where actually white have to be extremely precise so one of the ideas would be bishop d5 uh, but also bishop a4 however after b takes on a4 uh, and rook b4 king e6 let's say uh, rook a4 that would be probably a draw it would be very difficult to actually win that game with this one extra pawn uh it may be for magnus it would be possible but i believe wesley uh, would defend that that correctly so magnus found another way boom g5 and look at this move now the king uh cannot get to the seventh rank so and also cannot uh, play something like king e5 because of the e7 and this pawn is running rook uh, e8 uh, then we're gonna have rook b5 with the check with the attack on the bishop here is the problem uh king d6 now bishop a4 first and this bishop gonna control e8 and there is if you move the if you move the bishop then the rook can move somewhere uh, make some discovery attack here and, um, and yeah of course it's it's white is winning and if rook e7 then simply rook b4 and white gonna have extra bishop also winning so king g5 is actually forced and now and now what to play rook b5 attacking the king 
attacking the bishop. Of course, the bishop is still hanging here, but now black have to be extremely precise. There is only one way for black actually to uh, to stand stand the position and maybe uh, give some resistance. King f6, and it's very difficult and anti anti intuitive to find. Uh, King f6 was not played by Wesley, so uh, he played uh, he played something else. I will just show you what would happen. So one of the variations just exchange, uh, and then after rook f4, if if you would like to go for this end game, it looks like very easily uh, won by White because what can go wrong king e7 uh, king f3 so first lesson of the end game okay uh, king e6 let's say king e4 and now it looks like white gonna win this is the bait so black ha will have to go there and uh, what white have to do is just pick up these pawns and win the game so what can go wrong first h6 so the king cannot enter this way so uh let's jump with the bite so we have b4 we have king d6 we have b5 king c5 and now the king can uh pick up these pawns uh but after king b5 king f6 h5 and now if this pawn goes so far to h3 uh then the white not gonna be on time but if not and playing something like h4 there is the same problem uh very precisely now king c6 uh, king g7 king d7 and this king is on time to get to the corner king h5 king e8 now king g6 king f8 and uh, white cannot stop it cannot stop king h7 king f7 and if the king goes this way then of course the king gonna get to h8 and if you don't know this end game is completely uh drawish is is it just that draw uh and if not then h5 king f8 um uh, h6 king f7 king h8 uh, king f8 h6 and this is the stalemate so this is why it's uh, if the king is in the in the corner, it's a draw. If white king is in the corner, it's also a draw. So king f6 was uh, was a chance. This is this was only one of the lines. Uh, but this interestingly is a, is a drawish line, even if it looks like like winning. Very tricky. Rook f5. It looks like much more logical, but this is losing move, and this is losing move for the reason. Now Magnus has only one way to win that uh, and and he delivered so we have rook before a takes on b3 and now e7 this is what we have to find and now the point is that if rook e5 is played trying to stop the pawn white have very beautiful move rook b5 boom pinning the rook watch at this move uh so that would not work the king cannot come to unpin because of course we would have just exchange and then promotion and winning the game so rook b5 and now uh just promote with the attack on the rook so uh yeah whatever it's played doesn't really matter uh even if this is just too slow uh, queen b5 comes with the check um, and then yeah doesn't matter what's gonna be played uh the queen gonna catch the pawn and win the game so instead of that wesley said okay you're gonna make a queen i'm gonna make the queen and my queen also controls g7 what is your move magnus uh we have queen e7 with the check we have king h6 now we have rook h4 rook h5 so what wesley did he just created the fortress this is the fortress and he has one extra pawn but magnus found the way actually he smiled in this position uh to break the fortress so pause the video and find the winning continuation for white it's only one winning continuation for white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so look at this technique it's a very simple technique what uh white want to do is actually move the queen to f8 bring it to the f4 uh bring it to d6 and go back to f8 now why to do that uh because after queen f8 we have only one move on the on the board here 
actually king could go to, to g5 but then we're gonna have the checkmate on f4 so it's not working so uh queen g7 and now this is why magnus uh smile queen f4 and there is only one move the rook is pinned so the only move is g5 and now this pawn is not defending the rook anymore this is the difference and now the queen goes back to f8 so queen d6 queen g6 now queen f8 and now the queen there is only one move again queen g7 blocking and now finally rook h5 and in this position wesley so resign and he resigned because if he take the rook he gonna lose the queen uh, and the game and he if he doesn't then the rook gonna come to g5 and <laughs> the queen gonna be lost anyway so doesn't really matter uh this way or another this is why after rook h5 Wesley so just resign and we have three another crazy games I will show you one more of the of the first day of the final uh, I'm not sure which one but maybe maybe some of the of the games which Wesley so won in one of the games this was just insane how Wesley I uh, got the completely winning position then Magnus equalized and at the end uh, what just happened was Wesley tried to push and push uh, to the win and really unexpected thing happened so i don't want to spoiler anything uh, but there was also another beautiful last game was very when uh wesley so had to win on demand that was also very beautiful so i will choose one of these games uh, both of them uh, were, were just beautiful so stay tuned if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one